Hi, I'm Dave Wilson with D. Wilson Manufacturing. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions lately about some suppressors that are on the market. They're all very similar to each other. Uh, so today we're going to talk about four uh, pretty common ones. The OpSync 12th model, the Allen Engineering AEM5, the Otter Creek Labs OCM5, and finally the JR Machine Solvent Trap. So first up is the OpSync 12th model. Uh, they started making them back in the 80s. Uh, some general specs on this thing. It's about nine inches long. It weighs about 24 ounces. And keep in mind that number is after this thing has had about 20,000 rounds plus through it. So it's gonna be a little bit heavier in comparison to the other ones just because of all the carbon buildup. Um, another common specification on these things is how many turns it takes to thread on the end of a muzzle. Um, this one in particular is about seven turns, which is exactly what it should be. And finally, we're going to talk about the bore size or aperture in these things because that can slightly affect um, how quiet it is. So this particular one has a 0 0.265 aperture. Next up, we have the Allen Engineering AEM5. Um, it's pretty much identical in construction to the OpSync 12th model. Um, they're both actually made by Ron Allen. Um, the OpSync M5 was before Ron started Allen Engineering. Um, this thing weighs 20.9 ounces, is also nine inches long. Um, the aperture size on this is actually artificially big because uh, when Ron built this for me, uh, we bored it out so you could shoot six millimeter through it. So just as a data point, this one is 0 0.285 in diameter. And this also takes about seven turns to fully tighten against the collar. So the new kid on the block, Otter Creek Labs, uh, they set out to make a modernized uh, version of the AEM5. Uh, so this, this is their suppressor. It matches pretty closely in length. Um, all these are approximately nine inches long. Um, this one is a fair bit lighter. It is about 16.8 ounces. The aperture size is on these, uh, just a hair smaller than my AEM5 at 2.8 inches. Um, and this one takes about two more turns to fully seat on the collar. Um, it, it's kind of a, a different design. I know Andrew at Otter Creek uses some more modern welding techniques to put this thing together. Um, so it's pretty cool to see someone out there trying to make something that's uh, modernized. Um, you know, it might make some of the purest cringe, but it is a pretty, pretty good representation of what the AEM5 is. Um, so we're excited to shoot this and see how it performs. So last but not least, we have a solvent trap. Um, this is sold as an unfinished solvent trap, so it's not a suppressor. Um, we filed a Form 2 because we're a 0702 manufacturer. Um, we were able to finish this. It weighs in at just a hair under 16 ounces. Um, the construction of this is a little bit different. We'll break it down in a second and show you the internals. Uh, we bore this out to 0 0.285. Um, generally, it's it's a pretty decent representation of what an AEM5 is. Um, I would say the most notable difference, it is slightly longer. Um, does have knurling just like an AEM5. Uh, we'll break it apart here real quick and show you what the internals look like uh, because it is a little bit different than the more traditional cans. So one thing we talked about, this uh, can is a little bit different than the other three we talked about previously. They are non-serviceable, fully welded designs. Um, this one from JR Machine is serviceable. Both the front cap and the rear cap uh, come off. So we're gonna spin this off real quick and show you the baffles. Um, there are two stainless steel baffles and I believe it's four uh, titanium baffles. So that kind of helps contribute to why this thing is so light. Um, so like I said, it does come apart. There are six ba baffles in total. The, the first two are stainless. Um, you'll notice they are clipped as well. Uh, like I said, we did bore them to 0 0.285 and the four baffles closest to the, to the end of the can are titanium. So now that we've given you a brief overview of the cans, uh, some general specs, uh, things that might be of concern to you, like weight, bore size, length, things like that, 
Uh, we're going to go out to the range, shoot them side by side. We're going to be shooting XM193 out of this Mark 12. So let's see how they sound. As you can see from the video clips, all these cams do sound pretty similar. So I'll leave it up to you to decide which one is best for you and your application. Uh, maybe it depends on the particular gun you're gonna shoot. Um, so let's go over things like availability. So first, these first three cams are all manufactured. Um, they're sold as a suppressor. So you'll need to file a form, form four to own one. Um, the first one, the OpSync Model 12, I don't think has been made in about 20 years. So it's gonna be pretty hard to get one of these new. Um, if you wanted one, you'd probably have to look at the secondary market. Uh, the second one, the Allen Engineering AEM-5, still in production. Um, I know Ron has a, a fair bit of backlog on these, but you can find them here and there. Um, the next one, Otter Creek Labs OCM-5 uh, is also currently in production. Uh, I've talked to Andrew at Otter Creek Labs. They said they're going to try and make about 50 of these a week. Um, they're starting to ramp up production, so you might be able to find one relatively soon. Uh, the last one, uh, made by JR Machine, this one you would have to purchase as a solvent trap and finish yourself on a Form 1. Um, JR Machine does have these in stock periodically. I don't know what his production numbers are like. We managed to get our hands on a couple uh, in the last few weeks. Um, we saved one for ourselves for this test, um, and it, it performs pretty well. So we had a lot of fun shooting this video. Hopefully it helps you make a decision on which one of these cans might be right for you based on availability or how they actually sound. Um, thanks for tuning in. Mag dump.